up, heathens? How y'all doing? Something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? <laughs> uh, welcome to my channel. I've got GE with me again. Um, I know. Everybody I hates it when I'm on here. Nah. <laughs> You're you no, know, I had a lot of good feedback last time how, uh, yeah, I am kind of boring when I'm alone and easily distracted. So, <laughs> so it's nice to have company. I do plan on getting a rotation, but I like forgot to even ask anyone this week until like Thursday and or no, until like yesterday. And John was just like, "Yeah, sure, I can do it." <laughs> so, I'm de I'm dependable as fuck. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got GE with me again. This is a special episode, y'all, because uh, Ken Hoven's going back to jail. Let, let's let's jump right into that one. I, I got that one up queued and ready to go. I've got the District Court of. Uh, Kaneku, I don't know how to pronounce that. Something County, Alabama. Uh, so this was domestic abuse charges. This is uh, from when he body slammed his wife, to, uh, wife, girlfriend, whatever she was at the time, to the ground. Um, so yeah, Hoven's a scumbag. Um, it, but it's, <laughs> this is official. He was found guilty. So we we can now say that Kent Hovind is a tax evading fraudster, wife beater. Well, okay, maybe not wife beater, girlfriend beater. Yeah. And uh, it's not libel. It's a ma matter of public record. So yeah. there's that. Um, now, I, so wait, he did, did he actually body slam her? Like, he, or I haven't like, managed to listen to the whole recording. Um, it's, it's okay. kind of, it kind of hurts to listen to it. I hate it. Um, <laughs> but from what I've been hearing, it's like, yeah, he like body slammed her straight to the ground. Ooh. Damn. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so this is this is the charges that resulted from that. Um, now, uh, I consider these to be pretty light charges, but apparently these are like the maximum charges that he could possibly have been given in uh, this mm -hmm. district or whatever. Like these these are the legal maximums. Like he he got fined five hundred dollars, which is the legal maximum fine. So that's like the dude's a millionaire. That's a drop in the bucket. Um, oh, is he a millionaire? I think so. I don't know. It, if he's not a millionaire, then he's an idiot with money. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's definitely so. taken in millions of dollars over the years. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, he's also, he, he has to pay a hundred dollar in bail bonds fees. Um, I, probably, I, my favorite part of this whole thing is the, uh, he's got a fine of $500 and then they follow that up with which is taxed which that, that's just got to hurt him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine how that would be a little bit of a jab. <laughs> um, but now the, the horrible part of it, like they sentenced him to one year in jail, which mm -hmm. is going to be served as 30 days in county jail and then the balance is suspended, which I feel like that's bullshit. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't know. I, Thirty days in jail for body slamming your girlfriend. I yeah. I think that's. Especially, I don't, well, I don't really think justice is served. It's not like he's got a squeaky clean record. Like when you've yeah. already been in jail for ten years and you come out and body slam a girl and you like they just like oh no it's fine you're an upstanding white Christian gentleman I guess you only get thirty days. So <laughs> it's it's a slap on the wrist, but yeah, at least we can drop the allegedly with the uh the whole hoven is a wife beater thing do uh, you think he can survive without going uh, uh you know a day uh, a week without a whack of the uh, whack of the, whack the atheist episode whack an atheist wednesday which i think moved to tuesdays didn't it i don't know i, don't I think know. isn't matt powell moving to the compound so he, he, maybe he can take that over for the month that probably Ken's gonna be gone yeah, I don't know. I just know that I've never been whacked off by Kent Hovind, so I guess really? yeah, uh, I, thought... I may never be. Hmm. I, okay, well, okay, maybe it wasn't when he did the whack and atheist thing, but I, I just found out today that Kent Hovind actually has a Twitter. He hasn't posted anything on it since 2019, but, like, the last thing he posted was a response video he made to you. And he, it, oh, starts, really? it starts with, like, extreme profanity warning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, lo I love that. Uh, I, I also loved how in that debate he tried to shame me for drinking beer. And I'm like, this isn't even bad. <laughs> did, did you know that Jesus' first miracle was turning water to wine so the party could keep going? <laughs> like, like you, you're going to blame me for drinking beer? Like, nah, it's fine. Apparently. 
And I've, oh, I forget I forget what the verse is, but there there is a verse where um, I, it's in the Pauline epistles, and he he's getting all pissed at the congregation because they're getting all drunk and uh, and uh, eating all the food and stuff. But the thing that he's mm-hmm. mad about is not that they are drunk; it's that they didn't wait for everybody to we get there before they started torturing drinking. Torturing babies for fun is really wrong. <laughs> so so like. The Bible is not anti-alcohol by any stretch of the imagination. Like the verses that get stretched to be a temperance sort of thing, they're always like when you read them in context, it's like, eh, that's not actually about getting drunk. <laughs> well, um, I think the 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 one the one solid verse uh, that you could use um, for like anti-drunkenness was is that Leviticus law where it talks yeah, about like if your son's you, a drunkard. Yeah, but it's it's like, isn't there one that's like, and do not drink wine, something, something, something. I, I'm I'm picturing something. The something only reason like I know that. that verse is because I I uh, I really like Mash, and that's the one that Father Mulcahy was asked to give a sermon on temperance, and he got drunk on the sacramental wine before he gave the sermon, <laughs> and he kept on repeating that verse over and over again. Um, but like, I, I remember looking that up and thinking like, oh, that's not actually telling you not to get drunk. I don't remember what it is, but it's like in context, it's not that. Um, yeah. Uh, so some people use, um, some apologists use the, uh, you know, Noah being found drunk or whatnot by Shem as, uh, as like an argument against like drunkenness or something like that. Uh, it, it, at least I've, I've heard, I can't, I can't think of who, but uh, I've heard, I've heard some apologists, uh, you know, have that. Yeah, as... But, but, but wasn't, no, wasn't it ham ham that song? Maybe it's, Curse, curse of ham. Curse Maybe it was ham. ham. I'm pretty I sure because I, I, we just got past that part with my daughter a few weeks ago, and uh, she, she was making jokes about the name Ham. Um, cool. So that's what I think. Uh, just some geeky guy says off topic, but I just want to say you have no idea what us Americans would give to a healthcare system like yours, Rhino. Um, yeah, Canada's not even the best healthcare system there is that uh, that does socialized healthcare. But like, we're not bad. We're pretty good, but we're not the best. Like example of that, I had my son at uh, walk-in clinic. I think it was yesterday. Uh, it's been a long week. I don't remember what day is what. Uh, he had an ear infection, and the walk-in clinic was just, it was crazy busy. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we we got what I think was just like a typical like not typical necessarily, but like a, a high pressure pill pusher doctor that just wants to give you a prescription and get you out of his room so he can get to the next patient. He he didn't have time for us because uh, he was being overworked. Um, and like, like part of me, I see that, but then another part of me is like, eh, don't give me antibiotics unless we actually need antibiotics. Like I'm not here yeah. for a pill. I'm here for a diagnosis. If you don't think antibiotics are necessary, I'm going to listen to you because you have gone to school for this sort of thing. I have not. And I'll just like, I'll take your advice. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. I don't need a pill. If you don't, if you don't think I need the pill, I got the feeling that he was one that was like, okay, this guy's just here for a pill. So I'm just going to fill out the prescription and rush to the next room well you know that's a real problem at least here in america because yeah. i mean you have like pharmaceutical companies that like have these oh, yeah, really the, big the expensive like bags. parties and yeah yeah i mean that they'll have these big parties where they're pushing pills and all this other stuff i mean that's one of the reasons why the uh, opioid uh, crisis is so yeah. bad um so yeah. i mean it, it wouldn't surprise me yeah, I don't know if we have the same kickback system in Canada. I'd imagine there's something, but you like usually when we have something that's kind of the same as the American system, it's like it, it, it's um, reduced. Like we have the same thing, but to a less, lesser extent. So I'd imagine that our doctors do get kickbacks from uh, pharmaceutical companies, but it's like they're, they're like legal caps on how much they can get kickbacked and like how mm-hmm. many prescriptions they can write for the same thing before an investigation has started uh just some geeky guy again says so rhino what you're telling me is that hoven practices the same abuse tactics that his god does yeah basically well i you know i didn't mean a body slam is kind of light for what god does yeah actually, god's you, if, pretty bloody if you body slam god he will kick you in the nuts to so that he can win Okay, so now a bit of housekeeping that I think I wanted to get into earlier, but I got too excited about Kent going to jail. Um, <laughs> so uh, you guys are getting we buffering right that now. Torturing babies for fun is really wrong. I have I'm having internet issues tonight. I don't know why. 
Um, my upload speeds right now are like last time I ran a speed test, it was at like seven megabits per second. Do we understand and, that torturing like, babies combine a video really call wrong. with a stream going on, and there's probably a device or two doing something in the background? Um, <laughs> It's not great. I do, you, this shouldn't be a problem for much longer. Um, I have just signed a deal with the devil. I hate Bell the company, but I am. Uh, I, I. They had a really good deal on fiber optic, that it's like 1.5 gigabit per second download speeds and 980 megabits per second upload speeds. So it's like literally oh, wow. 98 times the upload speed that I have now. Because right now mine caps out at 10. So like, yeah, I'm only getting seven, but I only. I'm only supposed to get 10. So it's not that slow, but when you're talking about speeds that slow like like the cap is that slow then any tiny any little tiny hit in performance is just a death sentence so yeah if the stream craps out i'm sorry uh skeptic dank says kent has martial arts training claimed his girlfriend tripped over his hip he has martial arts training that wouldn't surprise me he seems like the kind of guy that would have like gone to karate as an adult and taken it seriously like being in a kid in a class with a bunch of 13 year olds <laughs> kind of like dwight Schrute on the office I, I can't get through the office i just find it too boring so i haven't gotten to any dwight Schrute uh, oh, okay karate yeah yeah he's he's in a karate class and he threatens to beat my uh mike a lot but yeah he's the he's basically the big kid in the karate class <laughs> yeah i i could see i could see that being kent um yeah kent also had to um pay uh pay cindy that's his girlfriend or wife or whatever she was uh he has to pay her uh her medical bills which 21 24 72 that that doesn't seem like a lot i hear all these horror stories about like in the states of like i went to the hospital for one thing and it was ten thousand dollars so hopefully that means she was fine Oh yeah. So basically if it's $2,000, that's pretty much why I went to the doctor and I got like a, I don't know, like an ice pack. Uh, I, I would assume that she didn't have anything too serious. If she had had like broken ribs or a broken arm or something like that. I mean, it would have been way up there. Although I guess technically she could have had insurance and the insurance covered yeah, the that majority might just be of like it. The deductible could be the deduct deductible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, well, I mean, if that it could have just been an exam to say, like, see, I do have injury. Like, I have bruises all over me that shouldn't be there. Yeah, like, I could see that, be, too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the big news of the stream. Now that I blew my load on the first image, let's go on to the next <laughs> one. <laughs> Okay, this is from American, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, accounts for these streams. It says, Atheism is a belief position that atheists have long considered. It is not an absence of anything. It's no different from what you consider religion. I consider atheism your religious faith, and people like you on Twitter are evangelical atheists. Now, obviously, this is in the middle of a conversation, but I didn't actually read the whole conversation. I just, by itself, I just kind of want to address this, because... There is the big fight about the atheism debate and whether it's positive atheism or lack theism or whatever you want to call it. I hate that debate. I despise it. The main thing, like, think? the only real reason to make a distinction like that is so that you can make someone understand in a debate situa situation, like a formal debate, that's like the person making the claim is the one that needs to provide the evidence. If you say there is a God and I say, I don't believe you, it's now on you to provide the evidence. If I say there is no God and you say, I don't believe you, then it's on me to provide the evidence. This doesn't matter in everyday conversation. Mm -hmm. Like in just normal back and forth dialogue between normal people, that doesn't matter. That distinction is meaningless. Yeah, I agree. I think as long as you can, uh, you know, effectively communicate what you do and do not believe about a certain topic. Uh, well, in this particular uh, situation, the context is, you know, whether or not you believe in God, like as long as you can communicate, you know, your position on that, I, I really don't think the definition of atheism matters. I've, uh, I've tried to shy away from the, the lack of belief sort of definition. And I, I generally equate it with, uh, you know, saying that I just have a non-belief, like I, I just don't believe ha whatever kind of label you want to throw on me for not believing in your bullshit, then please, 
you know, label me that, but it, I just simply don't believe in your God claims and everything like that. So it, really that matters more to me, uh, especially on Twitter, because you don't have all that room, all that much yeah. to like communicate. Twitter with, is where you know? so, goes to die. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think as, as long as people understand your position, there's like, this is just being like combative to be combative and trying, I, I feel like whenever they do this, it's kind of like talking down or trying to insult like atheists. Um, and, uh, it, that's just how I take it. Maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong, but like saying that atheism is a religious faith, just, it seems, I guess, purposefully insulting you know, because it's like you're not even yeah. going to listen to what the person is saying. Well, I mean, it's also just like, gonna... it's also using religion as an insult, which for someone that has a religion, I don't know, understand how you think that's an insult. Like, I mean, I kind of get it. It's kind of like I knew you, I would am I sort of thing. Um, <laughs> it's like, very really, too cuckoo, yeah. But but really, like this this whole thing, it's like th it stems from them expecting you to take their completely non-evidenced claims too seriously like i i am not familiar with hindu apologetics i have never responded to a hindu video i don't know what the hindu apologetics are i don't even know what they would bring to the table a christian apologist is not going to expect me to be able to debunk hindu apologetics before i convert to christianity they just want me to take their ideas seriously they're, they're not worried about the other ideas Do so when i understand that torturing like, if i'm an atheist is really wrong I don't take the Hindu ideas seriously. They don't care about that. They just, they just, like, they, they put this priority on their ideas without giving a reason why their ideas should have this higher priority. And then people like Did Frank Turek. Did you know Turek, that there was a solution to warm climate? It's called uh, air People conditioning. like Frank Turek just, um, it's very like, they, they get out there and, uh, oh, what was I going to, sorry, the, the, the alert came through and it was Dennis Prager in my head <laughs> and it knocked me off topic. This, this, we're going to cover that video that that quote was from in a sec. Um, so, yeah, none of your business. As long as I'm off topic, may as well read the Super Chats. None of your business says there are no tenets of atheism. Even the Gnostic atheists do not require beliefs and practices. Atheism as a religion doesn't make any sense. And Like, yeah, no, it doesn't. Not even if you have the positive beliefs. Naramdaputz said, oh, it's just before I forget, here's another dollar. Thank you, Naramdaputz. Um <laughs> Now, John, I don't know if you noticed this, but it took me several streams with Naramdaputs of me trying to pronounce their name right before I uh, before they informed me that it's just stupid moron spelled backwards. <laughs> See, I would have I would have never guessed that that it was just stupid moron backwards. That, that's that's clever. <laughs> I did that. That was like one of the first comment of the days that I ever did at the end of my videos um, uh -huh. was uh, you just just someone who had like their name was just something spelled backwards and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to pronounce it and I just stumbled over it and was like, I don't know if that's a weird name. If I'm saying it wrong, just correct me on it. And it was just something written backwards. <laughs> <laughs> people always like to get me to try to pronounce stuff and i i half the time i can't but you know when i'm drunk enough i try <laughs> well i found that because so youtube loves engagement and they love it when people comment or whatever so I, I i find that a good way to drive engagement is to purposely mispronounce a, a word that is not really that hard to pronounce and then you get all the people in the comments telling you how it's actually pronounced yeah, uh, I've done I've done that without meaning to. So yeah, <laughs> well, I, doing it without meaning to is exactly how I figured out that is a good way to do it. <laughs> well, because I, I can't tell you, I, I've got this one video from a long time ago. Uh, I don't know if you know um, of the. I, I guess he's a social media person called Morg Official or just Morg. I guess uh, I he did a he did a video and I responded to it and I, I said. Uh, Euler instead of Euler, and I, I mentioned something about how he pronounced I've, it. I've gotten that one wrong too. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like every few, it's, even now, every few months, I get a comment like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen a uh, uh, Euler's discs though? Those things are fucking awesome. They're like these big heavy metal metal discs that you like spin them on a mirror or something, and they make this really cool noise. Oh, I haven't. I'm going to have to look that up. It's amazing. 
Uh, okay, so this one's yours. This is the people love to say hashtag pure blood is a Nazi dog whistle or some such other bullshit. Truth is, they're scared because they know their blood is riddled with spike proteins clogging up their capillaries. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine crippling yourself in the name of scientism. Keep your blood clean. And then uh it's got this is a 36-year-old booster, which I don't know, is that what they're calling people that get the vaccines now? I guess. I don't know why this guy looks like he's been on like a 12-day bender. I like that secretly thinks lockdowns are fun. Uh no, I'm a bit of an introvert. I will not be secret about that. I have enjoyed <laughs> not like the like putting on a mask and it being acceptable for me to like give people a really wide berth when I'm like just out walking in public. That's been amazing to me. I have loved that. <laughs> um, now that being said, my, my daughter is at a bus stop with another girl that she's, uh, she's never talked to. And it's always, we're always just kind of like awkwardly standing there talking. And so I like the other day I was like, Oh, well, you just, just say hi, just say hi say good morning uh and then so to demonstrate how easy it was there, there was a, a lady that walked past us as we were waiting for the bus so I said, good morning and she just glared daggers at me like good morning and do we understand like, that torturing babies for fun it's is easy really it's easy to do it's easy people like it when you do that <laughs> <laughs> and then the first person's like why the fuck are you speaking to me you plebe <laughs> yeah well it's easier for kids I, I I offered to do, like introduce like do it for her. like I'll I'll say good morning to the kid for you and then you know we'll strike up a conversation with her mother or whatever and it's like no no it's embarrassing when you're there dad I'll I'll do it by myself yeah just don't be with me at the bus stop and I'll do it myself I'm like okay <laughs> okay I get it kids are fun uh can we expect a foray into Christian TikTok yes I think so I think that's where. I have a William Lane Craig video that I think that's where it was originally posted. Oh, really? Yeah. Craig's on TikTok? I don't, well, I don't know. It's Maybe it's not TikTok, but it's like vertical format and it's short. Yeah. And it, okay. Like, um, yeah, I'm not going to read all these things, but like shows vaccine no. card without being asked. I'm actually excited. We're going somewhere on uh, on Saturday. It's an old power plant in Niagara Falls that they've converted into a museum and they're doing a light show on Saturday night. And it's really friggin' amazing. Um, so I'm going to take the kids to that. Awesome. And this is this will be the first place we go that requires the COVID passport. And I'm actually kind of excited mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Oh, and so, skeptic... uh... well, go ahead. I was going to say, just uh, Skeptic Dank says, I'm only hearing wet Jesus every time you say this. One of, one of my patrons is, is really uh, what Jesus? <laughs> um, and when I, I, I just say it quick, and he's, he's at a level that I say his name in, at the end of every video. And... Um, it, I started that level because I didn't think anybody would be crazy enough to actually do that. <laughs> and now, now it's getting longer. There's, there's a new one coming up that is, um, Jeffrey Dahmer with a CH, not a J. <laughs> so, so if you, you thought what Jesus being wet Jesus was bad, just wait for Jeffrey Dahmer. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So uh, at the very beginning of the of the comment though, um, I, I I wasn't gonna read all of the stuff down there either, but like I got a lot of Harry Potter vibes from it because it's like pure blood. Like I've seen yeah. that a couple of times on different social media uh, postings, but like the people wanting to be called pure bloods, so I'm like, what kind of fucking muggle shit is this? <laughs> Mud blood and proud. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that, like that's not how the spike proteins work. The mRNA is oh, yeah, gone within no. a week, and the spike proteins get taken care of by your immune system, and that's the whole point of the shot. <laughs> Teach yeah, them how like, to take care of the spike proteins. <laughs> well, it's really weird uh, because, uh, like, uh, down in the thing, it says um, "infuriated by the words natural immunity." Yeah, it's we, really what, funny. What do you think gives you the natural immunity? Exactly. Like people are, are talking about how just let your immune system work and everything. And it's like, that's exactly what the vaccine does. It's like pe people just have totally like tabula rasa themselves as to how vaccines work or they just haven't cared before. And it's just, it's so funny to see people like basically shoot themselves in the foot whenever they're talking about vaccines. Yeah. 
Oh, so BigZebra.com says, don't forget to ask for Jeffrey Dahmer's recipe for rice pudding. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. I think I'll skip that. Uh, so Sarah Salviander says, the biggest con ever is that Genesis 1 is anti-scientific. The truth is, it is miraculous. How did a bunch of Bronze Age nomads know that the universe had a beginning and the Earth and all life was developed over time? Science only figured this out recently. So I think this person is, like, reading evolution into Genesis 1. Is it? it I really don't know, understand how you can read evolution into Genesis 1. It's the whole, like, if you consider the, the whole like a day to the lord is like a thousand years thing um, and then you extrapolate that to mean it doesn't have to be exactly a thousand years it's just an unspecified period of time it's like time doesn't pass the same for him as it does for us um so then you can in throw that onto the word day in genesis and then you can kind of say like oh well life started in the oceans and then the land animals came and that but it, like even doing that though the Bible gets it in the wrong order. So, like, it just happens to kind of match up with the evolutionary picture if you interpret it in just the right way. But even then, it gets it wrong. Right. Well, yeah, because not all of the creatures in the ocean, um, you know, started or, or, or evolved. Yeah, whales and dolphins and stuff. Uh, you can still find their their hind leg, like uh, portions of their yep. hind legs. And uh, just recently, uh, I don't know. That's where the penis is attached. Yep, it is. They're right there we, on their pelvis bone. I mean, you you and me together, you bring up whale we pelvis and you expect there to not be a penis really mention. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of our thing. We're, yeah. we're both kind of known for the whale penis thing right now. Yeah. Uh, and then I don't know if you saw recently uh, their vice, there was actually an article where somebody, uh, I guess, a, I, I don't know who, but uh, I, they like cut away the outer layer, I guess, of a whale's fin and it, it exposed like the, the quote unquote fingers of of it and it it just it looks really eerie kind of reminds me of um one of those resident evil games um the liquors kind of reminds me of a, a liquor hand i don't know if anybody understands that reference <laughs> I, I don't play resident yeah. evil but i can i can kind of guess i know it's a zombie type game it is yeah. uh well it's a bio yeah, it, yeah, technically like, it's called biohazard but yeah, yeah but zombies yeah uh, so but, just uh, some it, geeky guy it, says, if you ever do response to Christian TikTokers, do one for a guy named JP Mensa. He's a black evangelical. Take note of that. You won't regret it. Um, I haven't even thought of going to TikTok as re response fodder. I will definitely keep that's that where, in mind. That's where all of the dumbasses congregate, Vice. I, got, I just go on there and search for like Christian or whatever. And it's just, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've seen the one of the, uh, uh, the lady who thinks that like, um, the, the vaccine is the end of the world or whatever. And if she says no to the vaccine, they're going to eventually start beat like extra blood makeup on her face or whatever. <laughs> I, <laughs> that sounds hilarious. I haven't it, seen that. Was, though. <laughs> I'm sure you have. I'm just probably doing a bad job of describing it. Um, oh, okay. none your business says, why does God use metaphors? Say what you mean. Like, well, this is actually, uh, so Do we Karen Armstrong's biography of the Bible really is a book that I very highly recommend. It's a great book and it goes through like the different stages that the, but like how the Bible came to be the Bible as we know it. Um, now I, I really love Bart Ehrman's stuff for the new Testament, like lost Christianities and all the different versions of first act. Just, there we go. Streams back. Ah, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's my internet. All right. So it, um, I'm not sure how much of that got out, but um, yeah. So the, in the ancient rabbinical tradition, um, they considered a text to be dead if they could no longer interpret a new meaning into it. And so that's why, like the guys who edited Genesis one and two together, the guys who edited, edited Genesis together, like you read through the whole thing, there's all sorts of parts where it's like, they just said this and now they're saying that and it's completely opposite. And it like, it's way more than just your big stories. I, I'm learning this as I'm reading through with my daughter. There's a lot of points where it's like, I could see that being one of those things where this one came from that area and this one came from that area. Um, there's no way they didn't notice these discrepancies. 
it just wasn't a big deal to them because the literal reading of the text is the most boring reading of the text. It's not the one that's spiritually inspired. It's not the one that is worth studying. You need to figure out what the deeper meaning is. So there's like there's a lot of depth to ancient rabbinical tra tradition that um, creationists just completely miss out on. Yeah, a good example of that is is uh, the differences in Genesis one and Genesis two, because uh, they they have different sequences for things being created uh, oh. between the two. Oh, God, Godless blessings just uh, eliminated one of my objections to the Bible. So you know that verse <laughs> where um, where God's telling Adam. Like, what, if you eat of the fruit in that day, you shall surely die. Yeah. Well, one day to God is like a thousand years. He lived to about a thousand years, plus or minus 30. Yeah. So, so he died in that day. Damn. Uh, Spot on, God. Checkmate atheist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up. Oh, you probably saw this. This was, um, uh, what's her, what's her face? Kaylee McEnany? Um, yes, she has deleted this tweet since this. Uh, but she posted, she retweeted the thing that's like the U.S. murder rate under Joe Biden because there's a big spike on the last year. What uh -huh. she failed to realize was that the last year is 2020, when Trump was still president. <laughs> <laughs> So. You know, it's always amazing to me whenever they attribute things to Joe Biden when it was really Donald it, Trump. It's like there, there's no possible way you could like, OK, first off is 2020. COVID probably had a big part to play in that. Um, but secondly, there's always when a Democrat president gets elected and the pro gun Republicans start doing their, oh, they're going to take your guns away kind of rhetoric nonsense. There's always a spike in gun sales. So. This might be kind of tangentially Joe Biden's fault in that he got elected and before 2020 was over, a bunch of Republicans probably went out and bought a bunch of guns. And mm -hmm. when there's more guns, there are more there's more gun violence. So maybe. But yeah, um, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a stretch. I, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I put more thought into this tweet than the person who sent it. Uh, did she did she say a single true thing the whole time she was press secretary? She was the press secretary, I, right? No, no, no. Sorry, Casey yeah, is. Press secretary. She was press secretary, but she never said anything. <laughs> so that, that wasn't that a was lie. a yes. She was press secretary, but no, she didn't say a true thing. Yes, sorry. Yeah, okay, that's right. <laughs> All right, next up we got Pastor John Hagee. I can't take credit for uh, finding this. This was someone else found this and pointed it out, but I, I thought it was funny. I did verify that these tweets were real before I collected them. Um, mm -hmm. But he, in uh, 2018, he said, college and universities today are brainwashing our children against the word of God. And then in 2020, he said, the earth and all that is in it belongs to the Lord and is under his control. So... I guess kind of shooting God, himself in the ass there. God is causing universities to brainwash children against the word of God. You know, I, honestly, if you took a look at the Bible, uh, this would make some sense because like, for instance, God hardened uh, Pharaoh's yeah. heart, you know, and um, you know, th there are certain passages where he talks about how, you know, there are people that uh, he's, uh, I guess, created to not believe or something like that. I can't remember the Bible verses exactly, but um, there's definitely, you could definitely say that there's some biblical support for God, you know, doing this kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it always amazes me that free will is the, uh, is the answer to the problem of evil because like the, 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 where, where in the Bible does it even say that we have free will? I've never seen a convincing argument for that. I mean, I can't think of a Bible verse, but I'm about, you know, this much in on this drink. <laughs> there, um, there was booze in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I can't think of anywhere in there. Um, I, I think that you'd have to, I, I guess, a, do some stretching. It, there's a lot of interpreting, interpreting and wiggling and, uh, so Adam Broughton says, Vice, do you get fellow Canadians sharing pro-gun memes, or is it just me? Um, no, I don't. But I also, like, I, I log into Facebook maybe once a year, like my personal Facebook, and I don't have a personal Twitter. Um, 
I do have a sock Twitter account. That's where I get all these uh, all these tweets from. I, I have a, a separate account that, uh, you know, just in case these people block me. Oh, yeah. I use my Brosephus account just like that. <laughs> I mean, I borrow it's, Bruce Lee's account. It's actually funny. In, in, my, in my case, my sock account, I use a picture of my real face. So I, I use the real me for the sock account, but the fake me for the real account. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up. Okay, so that's back to Kent Hovind. So now we're, we're done. We're done with that stuff. Now it's time to look at some videos. Oh, I've got one more. One in, more? in in mine it's the green one that last one that i sent you okie dokie well yeah, yeah yeah i thought i'd put that in um but um bum bum i did put, i put it in the folder not sure why it didn't get picked up okay um i am okay let's uh how am I going to do this? No, not that one. Let's change this to one of these days. I will not have to do crap like this live. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So pure, the unvaxxed semen market is coming. I'm going to be a jizillionaire. <laughs> And that that was just that was just too good not to use. Yeah, I you know they have this whole idea about how people that don't haven't had the vaccine like their blood is like going to be valuable. Like I don't even understand why it would like I, I just I don't un understand because <laughs> because um, oh my. I, uh, because I changed the thing, my Dennis Prager is bumping all. I got my Prager's bouncing around. He's getting all bumpy. Um, Do we understand that I hate when my Prager gets bumpy. Really wrong. <laughs> Do you remember a while ago when I I had that like back and forth on YouTube with the uh, with the guy that and I I I used an example of vestigial structures as a, um, on humans. There are like a lot of people have like little lumps at the base of the head of their penis. And they're called pearly uh -huh. penile papules. Mm -hmm. And I, I just use them because I thought they were funny. They're not even a good example of vestigial structures because there's a good chance that they're not. <laughs> but he, he just he just like focused on them and he kept on bringing them up. So it was like, OK, well, it gives me an excuse to talk about the pearly penile papules. So I'm going to keep talking about the pearly <laughs> penile papules. <laughs> Like at one point I was just like, okay, come on, guys. just go to the Wikipedia article. It says right in there that they're probably not vestigial. They might be this instead. Like, So I eventually I debunked my own point for him. It's, okay. it's sad when they can't, when they can't do the work themselves and you have to debunk, debunk yourself. Huh? So <laughs> JG man, two, six, four, five says someone should write the book about Catholic vampire Jesus who calls his followers to eat physical blood and flesh. Hashtag Catholics, hashtag cannibalism. Um, isn't that kind of already what they do? Like, yeah. they don't like the Catholics are the biggest denomination that does the transubstantiation thing, which is they believe that the cracker and the wine actually turns into the blood and body of Christ. Yeah, and I mean, I believe it's in John where you actually have Jesus talking about, I want you to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Didn't you say that in all of them? <laughs> it, I thought that was just a typical uh, Last Supper speech. Uh, maybe. I, I don't think that it, I can't remember if it was part maybe, of the Last Supper Maybe the Supper other ones he doesn't specifically say that it's my body and my blood, but it's like, do this and remember some me. I don't know. All, yeah. all of them have the Last Supper meal like that. Yeah. But I like I like the book of John. His Jesus is cool. <laughs> it's like, definitely the most interesting one. Yeah. Well, he goes out of his way. I, like, I, it's, it's astounding that apologists get away with trying to harmonize these accounts because John goes out of his way a lot to just directly contradict the other Gospels. Like the other three are like, this guy named Simon helped Jesus carry his cross. You read it in John, and he's like, he carried his own cross. 
<laughs> it's like there's no if ands or buts about it there's no he carried it part of the way and then someone else carried it part of the way he carried his own cross because he's god motherfucker um right the, the garden of gethsemane uh john doesn't even mention it but at the end before he's arrested when the disciples start resisting it's just like why would i not drink the cup my father has given me in direct defiance of the whole father if it's possible take this cup away from me <laughs> Right, like, it, it, and there's so much of stuff like that in John. It, like, how do they harmonize these things? I don't get it. Well, uh, yeah, I I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. How, I, like, for, as far as John goes, I don't know because in John, uh, Jesus's ministry was like I want to say three years, and in the uh, in the synoptics, it wasn't all that long. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have encountered where in Matthew, they claim that Matthew is structured thematically instead of chronologically, but I've yet to Mark. find no, no, no. Well, the most recent one that I heard was that Matthew was thematic and not cr chronological. Lisa wants to know um, how Jesus still has flesh. Do we understand that story we a lot of it is really wrong? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah no um i i don't recall which gospel gives an exact timeline or whatever but um, i i remember uh i think it was jay warner wallace was talking about how um mark was writing down the teachings of peter in rome and he wasn't writing it down chronologically it was like a sermon series so it wasn't necessarily in order so he was writing it down by theme uh so i know mark oh. is uh argued to be out of order um, but then that's that's one of the weird things because Jay Warner Wallace, like he'll he'll he tells you flat out that Mark was not written by an eyewitness. He was written by a guy who was hearing it from Peter in Rome. But then he will try and tell you that Do Matthew, Luke, and John were Davies eyewitness accounts. Really but Matthew and Luke directly copied off of Mark. Why would an eyewitness copy their account off of a non eyewitness? <laughs> like, that just doesn't make like that makes less sense than saying they were all eyewitnesses. Yeah, it, I yeah, I have no idea. Um, at, like, it, at least if they're all eyewitnesses, you can say they're just trying to get their story straight. But like, if you have an eyewitness copying details of something they were there for from someone who was not there, it just makes no sense. Yeah, I, that's that's the one thing that I don't get about people that say that they're all eyewitnesses uh, uh, too. Uh, that that's very confusing. Yeah, uh, Rob Gibbons says my old church said new Christians should read John first. Guess they really wanted to sell the idea of super Jesus. Um, yeah, and it, that's, actually that's another thing is that um, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he often refuses to perform miracles because it's not my time yet. I don't want to, like, you will not get a sign except for the sign of Jonah. I will give no signs. That's not what I'm here for. Uh, and mm -hmm. then John comes along and says... Okay, I'll turn the water into wine as a sign so that you shall know me and believe. And I'll walk on water because it's a sign and you shall know me and believe. And it, like, it directly contradicts everything. It's, it's crazy. Okay, let's actually do some Dennis Prager. Uh, you guys aren't going to be able to see John while we're doing this because I've got a janky setup. And when I share screen with him, it just breaks it in OBS. So we want John to be able to hear this too. Well, maybe I can... No, that's not going to work. Okay. Uh, Dennis Prager, everybody. Let's go back to the beginning. Most people, even college has not fully knocked this out of people. Most people do assume that it is innate to women to want to have a child. Why would most people assume that? I have no fucking clue, especially nowadays. Um, I don't understand like why anybody would make that assumption. Like, I think at this point in my life, I know more women that are not interested in ever having kids than I do women that want kids. <laughs> so, like, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's innate to women. Now, it is kind of evolution has kind of programmed everybody to want to reproduce so it is innate to the species to have reproductive desires um but the, uh, one of these neat things about evolving the complex brain that we have is that we can consider things and be like can i have a kid right now it's not really a good idea um or do i want a kid kids are friggin' expensive if i don't have a kid i can go parachuting more <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever I, I 
I saw a really good video that's like an argument against having kids. And what it was was uh, two guys trying to move this big screen TV. And then one the, one of the guys, I guess his son comes up, punches him right in the dick. And then he <laughs> drops a TV off of the second story. And it, both the guys are just like, what the fuck? And it's just like, why you shouldn't have kids? <laughs> that's, that's a good argument. Yeah. To want to have children. So when a woman says, I don't want children because of a certain issue, I don't know if people judge her harshly. I do. Of course he does. Because women are baby factories. How he's dare they? Dick. How dare they consider the implications of bringing a child into the world right now? You will not believe what my wife just said. <laughs> she goes, I will shit on his doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was going to end with doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> anyways all right <laughs> but yeah i i can understand that i think she's an idiot i think she's a, he thinks she's an idiot so i don't really think dennis prager needs to be talking about being an idiot or anything <laughs> no no he does does he have like i know he he's kind of anti-education does he have a higher education I, maybe he, um i don't know i i could i could i could do some research while, while uh, apparently it didn't work according to kc dennis prager education early life and education a major in history and middle eastern studies citation needed <laughs> 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 I love that there's a citation needed for that. <laughs> yes. uh, Columbia University of S School of International and Public Affairs. Um, he dropped out of graduate school. Yeah. Yeah. So he got a uh, he had a major in history and Middle Eastern studies. Maybe if this citation is good, um, <laughs> but he dropped out of uh, dropped out of further school. And like. I have nothing to say about that because I dropped out of college. I am a college dropout, but um, I also don't shit on education for a living. Yeah. See, I think that's <laughs> that's the big difference is that we're, we're not the ones shitting on education. He is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so none your business says capitalism, but don't you dare covet. As I I, um, I covered that when I covered a Dennis Prager video recently. And we that was, understand um, that torturing babies for like, really It was wrong. about the Ten Commandments, and so we get to the "You shall not covet" one, and uh, it's like, well, if you go to Dennis Prager's channel and you search for capitalism stuff, you'll find all sorts of stuff about how pro-capitalism he is. Do we understand yeah, that he torturing babies for fun as is really wrong. It being like, oh, capitalism is people see a need and they want to help people so they start a business to help people and then when that business makes money they reinvest into their business so they can help more people and it's like mm, no some people start a business because they think they can make a lot of money doing that mm -hmm. some people start a youtube channel dedicated to feeding misinformation to a bunch of right-wing nut jobs because they see that that gets huge numbers of views and you can make some serious cash doing that mm-hmm you know how many times I've thought about just becoming a religious grifter? It's so easy just to become a millionaire. Why do I have to be a good yeah. guy? Why, why, do, why do I have to have morals? <laughs> morals suck. Uh, <laughs> morals suck. <laughs> uh, Godless Blessing says, Jesus Christ Superstar illustrates the schizophrenic personality. Human, oh, I'm God. Oh, human. Oops, now I'm God. Um... First off, that's not quite how schizophrenia works. I know that's how it's portrayed in the media a lot, but um, as, uh, I don't. I don't really think there's even such a thing as like the multiple personalities mm -hmm. thing. Um, I'd have to do a bit more looking into it. But um, Jesus Christ Superstar, I actually really love Jesus Christ Superstar because it doesn't portray God as a God. It portrays him as a human being. 
And um, if talk to my mother, who is a uh, lay worship leader in the United Church of Canada, she will tell you that the, her biggest problem with Jesus Christ Superstar is that it ends at the death of Jesus. It doesn't keep going to the resurrection. It just ends at the death. And it's like, that's because he's human. And the idea of telling the story from Judas' perspective is, um, I like that. That's, I like that a lot. Oh, I didn't know that's uh, that's what it was. I mean, I I, I think that there's actually like a, a like a movie type kind of thing where you can view it on a streaming service. I think that's out there for it. Jesus uh, Christ yeah, Superstar. Uh, there was a 1970s movie that came out. Um, that one was directed by Norman Jewison, who attended the same church as my grandmother. I I once went to a oh. church service with the guy who I I want to say it was directed directed produced one of the one of the higher ups on the thing um i went to a church service with the guy and uh apparently he's he keeps to himself quite a bit so like it was pointed out to me like oh that's the guy that did jesus christ superstar and then he just like snuck out at the end of the service and didn't talk to anyone um <laughs> but yeah, yeah i it, really i'd really want to see the book of mormon and oh, i just I, I i want to see that so badly I, i've never seen yeah. it I, I know oh, that there is what? huh I, I hate uh, I hate that the borders close because of, like Buffalo has a pretty it has a pretty good theater district like uh, Shays Performing Arts Center is a pretty good place like we've seen the Lion King there we've seen Les Miserables there uh, we've seen a couple other things there as well and uh, I, I know they have had the Book of Mormon there in the past but I the borders close so I can't go I mean I think <laughs> I, I think I might be able to go with the vaccine passport now I'll have to look into that um, so that, that's my plug for the uh, the Buffalo arts scene. Shay's Performing Arts Center. <laughs> oh, you, you, uh, let me let me tell you, one of the most profound moments as a parent for me um, mm -hmm. was when I took all three of my kids to see The Lion King, and um, just in the opening thing, when they as soon as they start singing and that sunrise shows up on the screen and everything's happening, my daughter just like she just started like shaking in her seat with excitement. She's like. Eh? It's like just just seeing my kids enjoying this thing so much. It was it was amazing. <laughs> I can't I can't do it justice by describing it. Uh, Vandalia 1998 says, speaking of Christian drifters, I think that's supposed to be grifters. Uh, a few months before I stopped going to church, I was thinking about making my channel a puppet show for Christian kids. That's how Jim Baker got started. Do we understand that torturing babies for fun is yeah, really wrong? Jim Baker actually got started as a puppet show on... Uh, I think it was the same network that the 700 Club was on. And it was like this crappy, pathetic puppet show that somehow got popular. And then he started an amusement park and embezzled a bunch of money, went to prison for a few years, and now he sells buckets. <laughs> anyway, back to Prager. But, but it's not most people are judging her harshly. It's that most people are just confused. They're just confused. We're confused about why people wouldn't want to have kids. I mean, I really don't think that we need every single like we person torturing babies for fun is really to wrong. procreate. No, like, I think we're past the point. Yeah, we need less. <laughs> uh, JG we Man especially... twenty six forty five. I, I want to read this one because I, I I know I know what it's referencing, but I'm also really bad at pronouncing it. But he spelled it out in like other words or phonetically so asa digo elbow way what does that mean asa digo elbow way <laughs> i think i don't know yeah. i'm bad at pronouncing it it's a thing okay. i'm not going to even try to explain because i will botch it <laughs> back to pray <laughs> excuse me why do i think she's an idiot because, because you're an idiot. i don't believe for a nanosecond that the world is on the verge of extinction due to global warming. That's because you're an idiot. I mean, not extinction. The human race will probably survive. We'll probably be fine. I mean, yeah. a lot of us won't be. Like, on an individual level, there will be a lot of people that are not fine, but humanity as a whole will probably, will probably survive it. I mean, it is I one think of the so. many, yeah. many so, lies. Sorry. I... <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Can I press play? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back a couple seconds. <laughs> Many lies 
that people who with college degrees believe. That's all it is, my friends. I don't, I don't deny the world is getting warmer. But global warming's real. He doesn't deny it. Did you know, for example, that far more people to this day die of freezing than of warm? So more people die of cold than of heat. <laughs> like, yeah, the world's getting warmer, but more people freeze to death than die of heat. It's like, yeah, you, uh. damn, Dennis, you dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, and on like, but on top of that, like, we we British Columbia, you know, remember the heat dome thing from earlier in the year? Yeah, uh, that area normally gets one or two deaths due to heat every couple of years. This year, they had over 400 deaths because of heat. That's not well, insignificant. I mean, I mean, come on, Rhino. They just got to, you know, turn up the AC. Is everybody, yeah, well. Then of a warm climate? There. Did you know that there is a solution to warm climate? It's called air conditioning. There it is. There it is. What a fucking genius this guy is. What a fucking genius. You know what this reminds me of? It, it reminds me of, I can't remember which, uh, it was either Senator or re uh, Representative, but I, uh, a Senator or Representative came into our government, in, into a, ho a session of Congress, and he brought a snowball. And apparently yes. that, was, that was proof that global warming wasn't not happening. Yes, I remember that. Oh, and then uh, from, from my own state, there's Mo Brooks, right? Mo Brooks, uh, said that the oceans are rising because, and I shit you not, dirt and rocks were falling into the ocean causing the sea levels to rise. It's just, it's so fucking amazing to me how dumb these people are. These must be the people that watch Futurama and they see that episode where they solve global warming by dropping a giant ice cube in the ocean every few years and consider that to be legit. Yeah. <laughs> uh james inhoff someone said that was a snowball guy i think inhoff that's right yep yeah i actually when i saw that episode of futurama i i didn't see that one as a kid i saw that one as an adult and um it, like it, immediately it's like okay well water vapor is a greenhouse gas you add more you, you just throw ice in the ocean you're just adding more water to the earth I don't, I don't know, like, may, like, maybe it won't turn into, it won't automatically equal more water vapor, but I feel like it would. Well, yeah, so, I mean, adding, obviously adding more water to the earth, but the earth's still warming up, you're going to add more Do water vapor to the air. Do babies for fun is really wrong? None your business says, <laughs> you know, AC actually uses power, not exactly a fix. It's like, yeah, I mean... If all of our energy came from renewable sources, that might be a viable way to kind of ride it out if you are in a position to be able to afford not only to own an air conditioner, but to run it because they're they're expensive to run. They're not cheap. Um, like, yeah, if you're running it completely off renewables, then maybe that's a good way to ride it out. But it's not a good way to actually try and prevent it. <laughs> I'd actually like to see uh, see more use of heat pump technology. So it's, I haven't heard of that. But it's yeah, uh, it's like those things that hotels have in their windows that like they, they can do heating or cooling. Oh, just based on what the thermostat's set at, and it works under the same principles as an air conditioner, but it's reversible. So you could like in the summertime you set it to air condition, in the wintertime you set it to heat, and it just reverses which way the heat goes. So it just moves the heat from one side to the other. It's a lot oh, more efficient than uh, just air conditioning, I think. I don't know. It's... But um, yeah, so next up we have William Elaine Craig. Oh, great. I, I, he's so tiresome, like William okay. Lane Craig is. This this is not a verbose Lane Craig quote, and it's only okay. 2.5 minutes. So the question on the screen is, why doesn't God physically reveal himself? My answer would be because he doesn't exist. Yep. Let's see what Craig has to say. Obviously, God could make his existence uh, or Christ's existence more evident than yeah, he obviously. has. He right there. He obviously could make his existence more evident than he has. 
That means mm -hmm. he has not provided enough good evidence for us to reasonably believe in him. Right. <laughs> Mark uh, Baser says global warming, warming is a Canadian real estate conspiracy. Yeah, those people in Florida got to sell their homes before they go underwater. After they go underwater, Do it's okay. We understand that torturing them. babies for fun is really wrong. <laughs> but not before. We could have the stars spell out God exists in the sky. Or pretty he could have convincing. every atom inscribed with the label made by God. That would also be pretty convincing. What language would that be in, do you think? Could you, you know, do it in probably, a way that, like, just whoever, look, whoever reads it just reads it in their own language? I mean, I mean, he's God. He's magical. Like, I, with God being magical, I don't know why he's being confined to, you know, these types of things, like encar uh, engraving his names on atoms, which I don't even know what the fuck that would look like. No, I don't think... Have we ever directly imaged an atom? I don't think we uh, have. No, I mean, we... It, and if no, we have, no. it's probably not the level of resolution where you'd be able to read something etched on it. True. I mean, we we have representations of it, uh, like I guess our best guess from, you know, imaging that we've been able to do, but not not like a clear picture of an atom. No. Um, see, my thing would be like good good method for God to prove that He exists is that every home, everywhere that someone lives, just has a Bible, just miraculously appear, and it's in their own language, and it says exactly what it's intended to say. No question as to, like, why is the last half of Mark 16 in the book when it wasn't added till a couple hundred years later? No questions like that. Just everybody gets a complete Bible in their home magically, and it's in their own language. And you throw it out, you burn it, whatever. It's there again the next day. That'd be, yeah. like, that should be trivial for God to do, and that doesn't force anyone to believe in him. Mm -hmm. But it'd be it'd be a lot more convincing than the nothing that we get now. <laughs> None of your business says, yeah. or you know, he could just walk up and say hi. <laughs> well, I don't know. See, I don't think that it would it would take something miraculous like that because yeah. as, uh, what, what what I've always said is that you've got to be able to show a suspension of the natural order of reality in order to show. Well, we first you got to prove the supernatural exists. Is really wrong. And and then you can work on proving that God exists in general. But I mean, you know, it's not my fault that like the idea of God has such a high bar set for it. You know, being okay. able to prove a suspension of the natural order of reality is a really high like that's I don't even know how you would go about doing that. But that's what you would have to do in order to even begin to prove that God exists. Yeah. So clearly God could make his existence a lot more obvious. But I think what the point you were making is, is the salient one. God isn't interested in just getting people to believe that he exists, to add one more piece of furniture to their ontology of the universe. He wants to bring people into a loving, saving relationship with himself. And uh, do you know the best way to get someone to in, to start being in a relationship with you is to convince them that you exist first. <laughs> you know, that would be nice. <laughs> like if, I, if I'm not convinced that someone exists, I'm not going to seek a relationship with them. I mean, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> then again, and I'm I not think fucking nuts. Yeah. That God in his providence knows how to so, so order the world so as to bring the maximal or optimal number of people freely into relationship with himself. And uh... so he knows the optimal way to freely bring people into a relationship with himself. Is the, but like, he's all powerful and he's all knowing. So if he knows the optimal way to convince people to do shit, then wouldn't that mean that those people would do the shit that he wants them to do? Like, it, it, like, like omniscience isn't really compatible with free will, especially not if you want the guy that's omniscient to be the creator of everything. But like, it, like if he has a goal, being all powerful, that goal basically by definition has to come to pass. So if he wants everyone to have a saving knowledge of him, then everyone will have a saving knowledge of him. 
Godless Blessing says, yeah, heat pump, that's what I got. Set it and forget it. Yeah, you just set it to whatever temperature you want, and all year long it just keeps you at that temperature. Although I find that in the winter I like it a bit warmer than... Uh, like, I, I set my air conditioner to 21 degrees, but in the winter I set my thermostat to, like, 25 degrees. You know, I can't do that kind of conversion right now in my head. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is. I like to keep um, my house comfortable. Is it double <laughs> it and add 32, or is it add 32 and then double it? So 25 uh, would be 50, so it'd be 80. No, that's too hot. It's not 80-something. I don't know. Maybe um, it is. The, maybe, maybe I just like it hot. <laughs> I can I, imagine you liking it hot. I have twenty one degrees case. sounds comfortable to me. Yeah, I have a mild case of uh, Raynaud syndrome, which is basically like the veins in my fingers are too skinny, so they don't carry enough blood. So my hands are always cold, pretty much. So I I probably keep stuff a little bit warmer than it it should be so that my hands and feet can be more comfortable so 21 uh, degrees celsius is 70 degrees fahrenheit and 25 is 77 20. somebody just yeah 25 would would be 77 yeah uh, but well, the, I mean, the yeah. double it nab 32 is a rule of thumb. It's, it's because the, the scales are different size, like the units are different sizes. It doesn't hold true universally. It's just kind of sort of works for temperatures that we deal with frequently. Anywho, he knows that it, where did Craig go? Why is he so quiet? Did I scroll down? I scrolled down while Craig was selected. He knows that it isn't uh, necessary or profitable to have Jesus of Nazareth appear miraculously to every single person in his lifetime in order to provide sufficient grace for salvation to everybody. And why not? Why, why would showing that the guy that's supposed to give you salvation exists in the first place not be conducive toward bringing people to a saving knowledge of the guy? Is it getting past your bedtime, John? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I just I didn't have anything else to add to what you said. In fact, okay. It's it's possible that in a world in which God's existence was as plain as the nose on your face, in which Jesus was constantly appearing in people's bedrooms, climate, it's called air conditioning. That they would get rather uh, annoyed at the effrontery of this intruder uh, popping into their their houses all the time uninvited and lead it all to a deeper faith or love in, in him yeah so... i find that i think that's bullshit well yeah obviously <laughs> well no i mean okay so um, you know the if you consider god being that he's all powerful he can make anything happen he's magical as shit i mean if if he were to pop into somebody's bedroom i mean I, there would be no doubt in these people's minds that that was god you know, and that they should like, I guess, bow before him or whatever in the fuck. Um, like he could we definitely make his presence known for fun is really wrong. So that people definitely knew that he was the one that popped up in there. And so I really don't even think that this is like a a, a good critic like a, no, a good rebuttal. It's terrible. Like <laughs> Like even even if his things right, if God is constantly popping into your bedroom and you're like, "Hey, I'm God," and you get annoyed and you're like, "No, go away, stop, leave me alone," and that drives you away, is God not supposed to be omniscient? Would He not know the ideal time to pop in and say hi to actually convince you? Like, why would He have to like keep trying like that? Why would why would He not just be able to come in at the time when He knows it'll work? Like it's, I have he, no idea. He's putting limits on God's abilities in order to answer this objection. Uh, so Fred, Fred is me. Fred is me. There we go. Uh, said WLC can actually conclusively prove the existence of his God, but he won't because God doesn't want him to. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Nunya Business says, if I wanted a relationship with someone, I'd walk up and oh no, wait, that's I scrolled up too far. I've seen that one already. Oh, no, 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 this is just a similar point to one I saw before. So if I wanted a relationship with someone, I'd walk up and say, hi, is God, is God a shy teenage girl with a crush on, uh, with a crush or something? 
Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Um, Godless Blessings says USA should go metric. Uh, would just like to point out that that was uh, part of our discussion about Celsius versus Fahrenheit. Um, there's nothing inherently metric about Celsius. We it is arbitrary, just like is really Fahrenheit wrong. is arbitrary. Um, it's just arbitrary with a different reference point. Uh, if you want to, if you want metric temperature, it's degrees Kelvin. But um, yeah, Celsius and Fahrenheit are both equally arbitrary. I do prefer Celsius, though, but I, I, like I am fully aware of the fact that that's just because I was raised with it. But also, being I'm... in can being in Canada, we get our units mixed up. So like. I know how many pounds I am. I don't. I do not know how many kilograms I am. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I like. I'm about about two hundred pounds, give or take. It fluctuates plus or minus like ten or twenty, depending on how much ice cream I've eaten in the month. Yeah, my exact uh, weight is fat ass. That's all I know. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, so I know my weight in pounds. I have no idea what that is in kilograms. Um, but when I'm thinking about like how heavy is something to pick up, I think of it in terms of kilograms. I know about how heavy a kilogram is. Um, you, when I'm talking temperatures, if it's the temperature outside, it's Celsius. If I'm setting my oven, it's Fahrenheit. If I'm taking my kid's temperature in the school screening, it's Fahrenheit. Um, distances are kilometers. Um, I do sometimes kind of default to thinking in feet and inches for short distances, but that's because a lot of the stuff like... Um, I, I do a lot of fish keeping stuff and you know, if you look at measurements for like do it yourself fish tank things, people are always given the measurements in Imperial because they're all Americans. So I, I think of those in Imperial. Um, but also like that's, that's something like when I'm measuring wood to cut it myself and like if I'm just doing it myself, I'm not following someone else's template, um, then I, uh, I do that in metric. But I, there have been times when I've gone to the hardwood store or the uh, the lumber store and been like, I need a two by four that is 480 centimeters long. And they look at me like I have two heads. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Centimeters? Like, OK, I could say so many inches and five seventeenths of an inch. But like, is that really easier than just saying 430 or whatever it was? Those those conversions are not accurate, by the way. I was just pulling those numbers out of my butt, so don't anybody get on me about how like four hundred eighty centimeters is actually this. I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> and then it, it's hard to convert too, because like that's that's one where you go to Google for the conversion, and it gives you the inches in decimals. It doesn't give you the fractions of an inch. <laughs> so it's ah. Uh. You're right. Kelvin, not Celsius. Kilograms. What about stones? Oh, stone. Don't even get me started on stones. That's a British thing. Do we uh, understand Vandalia says I know it's off topic, really but I don't wrong. think there should be a mandate because people after 200 years of research would should know that vaccines fucking work. Yeah, in an ideal world, yes, I would agree with you. We do not live in an ideal world. Um, and after the do vaccine passport thing was implemented in Ontario, really uh, about 90,000 new vaccine appointments were made like as soon as it was announced. So it works. Back to William. So I think that we can trust God's wisdom in providentially ordering the world in such a way that people are given adequate but not coercive evidence for his existence. And the question then for us is how will we respond to that? Why? What? Like, God, God in his wisdom knows the correct amount of evidence to provide so that people will believe in him, but it won't be too much that it pushes people away. As if too much evidence in favor of something will cause me to not believe in it. Like, yeah, I mean, evolution is so well demonstrated at this point that I'm going to deny it and become a creationist. Germ theory of disease, so well demonstrated at this point, so much evidence for it. I guess I better deny that now. That that's not how this works. <laughs> you know, I just I I really don't understand how God has provided any evidence because he hasn't. Like well, yeah, uh, well I mean that's my point. Um because people like William Lane Craig would point out how everything like out there like it's basically look a at look trees. at the trees. Yeah. Look at the trees kind of argument because every every apologist like William Lane Craig or that takes his position says that uh, like there's evidence of God in just every single thing that exists out there. And the problem is, is that every time we look 
at things out there, we don't ever see God. Like, like it, we don't see the fingerprints of God. Well, all we see are well. I mean, like there is that one supernova remnant or planetary nebula. I forget what it is, but it looks like a giant middle finger up in the sky. <laughs> so that could be God telling us what He really thinks of us. Yeah, <laughs> I've actually used that in a video before. I'm talking about how, like, well, God is all knowing. He knew what shape that nebula or whatever it is was going to take. If he like he knew what shape it would be in when we had the technology to discover it, and he designed it in such a way that it would be shaped like a middle finger. So, mm -hmm. like, if you believe God designed the universe, God is literally flipping us off because he knew that's what it would look like. He could have designed it in a way that it would look like a puppy or a unicorn or something, but nope, it's a middle finger. Oh, I just, someone's asking I don't who actually started the look at the trees meme. Um, uh -huh. that argument is as old as the debate between religion and not religion. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know who started it as a meme, but, um, <laughs> someone says tree, stop looking at me. That makes me nervous. <laughs> All right. Back to Craigie boy. Um, it's not an adequate response to complain that you want more evidence. You need to uh, look at the evidence that you do have. What evidence, William? It's all arguments. It's just arguments. Logical arguments that don't even follow from their premises. Especially like, do you know, did, did Craig actually come up with the Kalam argument or is that just attached to him for whatever reason? Oh, I mean, I think that's just something that he kind of maybe not made his career on, but he's definitely known for. I believe the the Klom was the Klom's pretty old. The, um, I I know I know the cosmological argument is like goes back to pre Aquinas Muslim philosophers, um, mm -hmm. but I, I'm just not sure when the Kalam version. You know, I'm waving my little bitty screwdriver around just so everybody <laughs> can see what's in my hand. Don't even remember where I got that. It came with something. Um, but yeah, like his name is attached to it for sure. But I, I don't know if he actually invented it or that version of it. But like his whole thing, like even if you grant the premises, which they're not necessarily true, but even if you grant the premises, all they lead to is the universe had a cause. That's nice. Yeah, I, I agree. The universe probably had a cause. It didn't necessarily because quantum physics is weird and would have, the universe would have been operating on quantum scales uh, pre-Big Bang. So maybe it didn't mm -hmm. have a cause. That's possible. But I can agree that the universe probably had a cause. <laughs> but then, of course, he goes and like, oh, and we know that cause is timeless and spaceless and immaterial. You know what we call something that doesn't exist in time, space and is immaterial? We call that thing non-existent. <laughs> And then he jumps to personal from like, oh, it's just such a stupid argument. But he dresses it up in so much sophistry that it takes a lot of chiseling away at uh, big philosophical words that aren't necessarily common parlance before you can figure out that, oh, he actually hasn't said anything. That's what I hate about William. And to make a decision on that basis. But I, I don't think that... Um, um, there's any reason here to think that God would do what you suggest. I, it, it may be that that would uh, do, do nothing in terms of bringing uh, a greater number of people into a saving relationship with himself. I don't see how that's even possible. If you let more people know, that's the end of the video, so I'm going to get you back. Okay. Um, stopped. Let's see. OBS is annoying with this. Turn you into a white box, and there you are. Boom, you're back. People can see you again. Put your pants back on. What? I, that assumes I, I took them off. I had them on to begin with. Fair. I mean, fair point. <laughs> but yeah, like, oh, William Lane Craig just drives me up the wall. Yeah, he definitely uh, he gets to me too, just because of how like. I don't know. His his we arguments really seem like really he long. spends a lot of time to say something simple. He dresses it up a lot, like with language and everything. 
and um, like these complex philosophical terms. But when you really get down to the nitty gritty of what he's saying, it's not any different than anybody else, no. any of the other apologists out there. It's just, it's dressed up better. Yeah. Nunya Business says grand eloquent sophistry, malarkey, gibberish. Yeah, that, that those are good descriptors of WLC. I'm just glad that I don't ever have to worry about him like responding to me for anything because I don't have a PhD, so I'm not good enough for him to respond to. Although he responded to Apologia. Yeah, I was going to say he did respond to Apologia, although he did respond to him in kind of a condescending way. Oh, kind but, of? No, that wasn't yeah. kind of. That was like absolutely like this guy's an idiot. He was he was mentally bankrupt when he was a Christian. His his intellectual life was just on the shelf. It's like fuck off. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much how he describes like every everybody that I guess it isn't like I guess a PhD a uh, uh, contender in this particular area, maybe. I don't know. I could see him describing all atheists that way, though. Yeah, I don't know. He's he's something else. I I usually go for Frank Turek instead of him because Frank Turek basically says the exact same things as him, but Frank Turek's an idiot, so he doesn't know how to dress it up and sound sophisticated. <laughs> I, I I have a love hate relationship with Frank Turek. Because he, he, he's so fun to respond to, but at the same time, it's just like, oh, come on. You should know that. Well, come on. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right. So I think that's it for this one. Thank you for joining me, John. I'll try, no I'll problem. Try and, I'll try and mix up the guests in the future so that... Um, Oh yeah, uh, none of your business says grand eloquent equals uses big words really to wrong. say nothing. It's like yeah, yeah. That's I I kind of piece that together. I've I, I've seen that word a couple of times. I've never really looked it up, but I I kind of guessed from context that that's what it meant. Um, it's like instead of eloquent, it's eloquent. But um, mm. yeah, anyway. So that that's it for tonight. Um, thank you for joining me, John. It's been fun. No problem. I will try to uh, spice up the guest lineup with more people more different or people um but yeah I, uh, I, have to, I have to actually remember to give people notice that i need them <laughs> yeah uh trust me i mean people get tired of me quick so you might want to <laughs> hurry up and like switch no you'll you'll be back don't you worry good right. i have fun on these streams so i'm glad they are fun uh yeah casey says she likes when you have when i have ge on that's only because he well, can't bother you while he's on with me <laughs> she's a little biased i'm just gonna put that out there <laughs> maybe a little <laughs> all right uh okay uh i guess i'm just gonna i i know where the end credits button is this time it's been less than a month so bye <laughs>